ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I just wanted to go ahead and explain uh, what's happened as of recent. On Sunday morning, I did a video and told everybody I'd finished the document for our mortgage people. I had saved the document, was ready to send the document out today. I have looked for the document that I saved, that I kept showing you guys, hey, this is the way we're doing it now. Say, but you guys don't get it. Only our people get it. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? That document is gone. That document is completely gone. It doesn't exist on my computer. It's as if it never existed. That document, the total collaboration to put that document together, that part of the document only took a day to do, but the total amount of work that went into getting to that point with that document, give me a second, let me turn this completely off because it's listening, was three weeks. It took me three weeks. The document's completely gone. Now, I didn't lose everything because let's just say I'm pretty good at what I do and I'm used to things like that happening. And I do know it wasn't a coincidence, just like the tapping of my phone. And yes, I know the phone was being tapped um, because, well, there are a lot of videos out there that explain what to, signs to look for to see your video being, uh, your phone being tapped. And let's just say I must be striking a nerve. That document will be finished. And we will produce the junior version of that for you guys. So you will get to see most of the information that was in that because they done pissed me off. So ladies and gentlemen, to show you how much they pissed me off, go and grab yourself a copy of Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10, Appendix Number 3. You're applying for the capacity to operate as a Federal Reserve Bank. Go back and look at the Federal Reserve Act. We'll show it to you. Section, well, Title IV, Section 401, Paragraph 18, or Subsection 18, sorry. Sorry, I'm pissed off right now. And that's what happens when I get pissed off. Like Tyrone used to say, it's better to be pissed off than to be pissed on. Well, I don't prefer to be pissed at all, whether be on or off. So let's show you all this so that you get it. This ain't changed. This part of the, the law has not changed. They have not amended this. Pay attention. They have not amended this. This is Section 401 of Title IV, Subsection 18, Paragraph Number 6. The Federal Reserve Act is amended to read as follows. Upon deposit with the Treasurer of the United States, not with the Federal Reserve Bank. Pay attention. Upon deposit with the Treasurer of the United States, of any direct obligation of the United States, I've already told you your promissory notes are direct obligations of the United States. I'll show you in a minute. Of any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, acceptance, trade acceptance, provisions of this act, under the provisions of this act, the Federal Reserve Act, any Federal Reserve Bank, that's you, making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the Comptroller of the Currency Federal Reserve notes now. That's the only thing they have changed. They only took out circulating notes. Go back, look at the June 12th Act, 1945, Section Number 2, and you'll see that they took out circulating notes and replaced it with Federal Reserve notes. So you get to deposit that junk directly with the Treasury. People say, what about the, the TDA account? What did it just say? Didn't it say deposit it directly with the Treasury? And because you are one of those membered banks of the Federal Reserve, you have to know that your notes are obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank and shall be redeemable, receivable, accepted at par in all parts of the United States for the same purposes as national bank notes or Federal Reserve notes. And shall be redeemable and lawful money of the United States upon presentation to the United States Treasury, start suing the Treasury. The Treasury engages in trading of bonds. You can sue the Treasury in regular court because they engage in commercial business. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if they're the Treasurer for the United States and they're supposed to be sovereign. 
They engage in commercial business. This is a commercial business transaction. This is banking business, which means it's commercial business, banking, commercial business. Get the, get the thing in your head. You all are not looking at things directly. You're looking at it from sideways, in ways, round ways, and no ways. And that's why you're getting nowheres. That make any sense to y'all? Now, so that you understand, I didn't say this. Congress said this. Uh-oh, let's put you back up there. Get on out of there. The other gives supreme authority to the treasurer of the United States to impound all the gold of the United States from the hands of individuals. So guess what? That's a violation of the takings clause. The Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution says nobody's property may be taken for public use without just compensation. Well, when the Treasury took it, he took it on behalf of the United States. Pay attention. He took it on behalf of the United States, so that means he took it for public use. If he took your junk for public use, man, just compensation is what the Fifth Amendment guarantees. So go after them in small claims court for violation of that act because they're blocking your access to lawful money. Now, let's take care of the rest since they want to fuck with me. The last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. What's the new money? Pay attention. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security and the gold, that's the new money, are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agents. Hold on now. Let's, let's pay attention. The provisions is for the issuance of Federal Reserve, now Federal Reserve notes. Before, Federal Reserve Bank circulating notes. Now it's Federal Reserve notes. As of the Act of June 12, 1945, subsection number two. Pay attention. And the security or the collateral or the gold backing these Federal Reserve notes is the obligation notes, draft, bills of exchange, bank of acceptances. As outlined in this section right here, section 401, which we read earlier. Your junk is money. Your junk is gold. But y'all ain't articulating that. So take the sections I just gave you and run with it. You're running out of time. Iran just bombed the United States Air Force Base or military base in Iraq. Iran. And they didn't just bomb it a little bit. They sent missiles, ballistic missiles, into Iraq at a U.S. military base. Where do y'all think we're headed? I, I, I don't say World War III. Where do y'all think we're headed? Pay attention to the news starting from this day. This is the 15th of January. Don't think that this is a coincidence, people. The 15th of January, do not think it's a coincidence. Things are about to change. So you guys might as well get with the program. Hey, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, it's been a long day. And not being able to find that document has only pissed me off. I will get the document done tomorrow and get it to our people. And then I will work on the redress petition for those who are incarcerated who went through two things. Because these are your two main issues. First, the judge entered a plea, told you you had to enter a plea. Whether the judge entered a plea on your behalf is not the point. They had an arraignment where they said you had to enter a plea. Guilty, not guilty, no contest. There is no law requiring you to enter a stupid plea. No law. So we're going to have you go after that for violation of your due process rights. No judge can enter a plea. Now they denied you the right to a fair trial. Why? Because they subjected you to involuntary servitude. Why? Because entering a plea means that they were subjecting you to the court's jurisdiction. Anytime somebody makes you a subject, they're putting you in servitude. And once you become a subject, that's why you guys can't be subjects of the United States government. You could never be a subject of the United States government. You've heard of British subjects? Okay, people in Britain can be subjects. But the 13th Amendment and the Northwest Ordinance prohibits involuntary servitude, subjection, slavery. Slavery was never lawful in the United States, but y'all didn't know. Y'all had no clue. It was always illegal in the United States. Well. For individuals who have not been duly convicted, the courts cannot subject them to slavery. Don't y'all know that? So that's the document we're going to put together for those individuals to help those individuals. So stay tuned. Like I said, I ain't got time. I got to answer this, y'all, because uh, we got to talk. Speak to y'all later. Goodbye.